finish this thing. Now we built the whole thing out of bamboo, which is great, but we also had that kid's scooter to salvage some parts from. If you're sort of building this all by yourself from scratch, you bought a hub motor and you want to put some lithium in it, that sort of thing, then we use this back frame here that we just chopped off. What you'll really need, obviously, is a couple of bits of steel, say about that long, 10 mil hole, cut a slot in it and your hub motor will fit in there nicely and you'll be able to feed that into the bamboo just like we've used this entire section. So it's um, just the same really, the principles are just the same. Now I've obviously bolted on my motor and wheel there because it's just a matter of putting the bolts on and I've got to get the batteries in this. Now the batteries that came with it are these things and these were completely shot. These are dead, they won't hold a charge. One day or other I'll saw them up and have a look in them, but they're completely shot. However, I do have a couple of these which are a small 12 volt motorcycle batteries. Unfortunately, they're different sizes. So somehow I've got to get this into here so that it's nice and sturdy. Because we do have this, which is the original battery box that came with the scooter, and two of those batteries will fit in there. So I've got to hang that battery box on underneath this bamboo frame. If you don't have this, then you're going to have to make some kind of box. I mean, this stuff is HDPE, you can just tell just by the feel of it. And so that's going to be kind of cool, and it's got every little slot in it. But you can fold one of these up, and if you watch Luke's video where he's done the thermoforming of HDPE, that'd be a really good way to do it. You could vacuum form them, you could build it out of acrylic and you could glue them, or you could build it out of wood on bamboo and screw it all together. But however you choose to do it, you've got to make a battery box that hangs under your frame. Now, because I've got this one and I want to hang it under the frame and we've already used that stitching method, what I've done is I've drilled a load of holes in the side, I'm going to pop it in there and basically I'm going to stitch it on with some string. So I positioned the box and I put a couple of wires on just to hold it in position while I stitch it. In order to stitch it, I make myself a little upholsterer's needle. So that's it there. In fact, it's just a bit of bent wire. Cut a bit of bent wire off, twist the thing in and it makes me a little upholsterer's needle that goes through those holes really easily. Because <laughs> if you try to feed this through, you'll be at it forever. So you need to make yourself something like that. And that reminded me actually that this is basic upholstery technique. It's the same kind of thing that they use when they're making a sofa, and of course sofas last 20 years. So you can expect a really good result from this. Of course, they don't, this gets a lot more bounce than a sofa would do, unless of course you have teenagers. But this should last, and if you're worried about it, then you can paint that with a bit of resin to toughen that up a little bit, or just leave it bare and make sure that you don't leave it out in the rain for about three months. But anyway, we just continue stitching through, progressing down those holes, and they're six mil holes I drilled at two centimeters apart, and stitch that battery box onto the frame. Okay, so that's the battery box in place, and the batteries fit nicely. Now, I did knock up this little foot plate from a bit of plywood that I had. I did think about using bamboo flooring, but that would have meant to go to buy some, and I'm a cheapskate. So I made this bit of plywood, and that slots nicely on there. There we go. Now all we've got to do is put the controls on and connect the gear up. So let's get the controls on. The controls, incidentally, don't consist of very much. We've got a twist throttle, which is a potentiometer really in the handle. The brake, and the brake has a brake cable to disconnect the motor, incidentally. So we have a brake, a twist, and another handle. And they obviously just go up the top there. So here's a close-up of the electronics. I mean, there really isn't a lot to it. I mean, there's the batteries there connected in series. So we've got two 12 volts making 24 volts. All of the wires go to this DC motor controller here, and it's labeled up where you need to plug things in. So you've got battery plus, battery minus, motor plus, motor minus. And then there is the throttle control. Here is the brake. And I know that because it's written on them. So all I have to do is make space and plug it all in and then it's ready to go. Okay, and that's it all put together. Actually, it works like a dream, which is amazing, eh? It's got quite a lot of uh, torque on that motor, in fact. I've been in the lab up and down on it a little bit and it did actually shock me, and to be honest, I've never ridden one of these. So, hmm, Luke! <laughs> because, of course, the next thing we want to do with this is take it in the car park and see how it performs. That's awesome! That is awesome! It's quite quick actually. Well, hey, I didn't expect so much from a 120 watt motor.
Look at that fat boy go! Really cool. That's amazing. Look at that big girl. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. It, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the brakes work. Your turn. Okay, that was huge fun, hey, and it caused quite a stir in the yard. We had just about everybody having a go on it. And what's really cool about this is how tiny this motor is. It's a 120 watt motor, really nice gearing, really nice drive. So of course there's lots to be learned from doing things like that. Not only all the techniques we use to make it out of bamboo and the fact that we can make it for three pounds instead of 300 pounds, but the engineering of it as well really helps and it's good to be able to pick those up. So we'll be using this engineering section, I think, for another project. Anyway, everybody's had a jump on it. We've all had a go around, around the yard. It was huge fun. Russ is even here from Intelligent Tinkering. He brought this down to show us, actually. It's one of his latest lamps that he's working on. And he's a big lad. I don't quite know how to put it because he's standing right there. <laughs> and I don't want to be cruel, but he's a big lad, so it took a lot of weight, actually, and it moved him along fine. Me, I'm not the thinnest either, and it did no trouble at all. So if you've got a kid who wants something like this, no worries, it's going to last beautifully. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to subscribe.